Hi everyone. So today we're going to be learning a little bit about using SQLite, which is a way to use SQL with Node.js. So the first thing I want to do is get yourself into an empty directory like I have here. And you're going to want to initiate npm. So npm init dash y. Awesome. Once that's all set up, let's get our first package. npm install SQLite 3. And it has three high severity vulnerabilities. That's all right. We're going to run npm audit fix dash force. That's going to take a minute. While that's happening, let's make a new file. Let's call it index.js. First variable we're going to want to declare is going to be a constant. It's going to be SQLite 3. And that's going to equal require SQLite 3. And then the method verbose. Awesome. And it's all done. Zero vulnerabilities are found. That's good. Uh, continuing on, let's set up our database. I'm going to make a new file here. I'm going to call it mock.db. Also, I should mention if you're doing a real project, you're definitely going to want to make a better file layout with a better model for the database. But here I'm just going to write some script just to show you how SQLite 3 works. So this is fine. So let's pick a new variable. Let's call it db. That's going to equal a new SQLite 3 database. And then we're going to pass for the first parameter the path. So for me, that's mockdb, the file I just created. The second parameter is going to be SQLite 3. And we want this to be able to read and write. So we're going to say open underscore read write. And this is going to take the parameter of error. And here what we can do is we can say if there's an error, let's return console error and then just log the error message but if there's not an error let's console log connection successful now ideally if we run this right now we're gonna get connection successful we did not we got an issue because I didn't put strings here. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. Connection successful. All right. The next thing to do is going to be to close the database. It's not really necessary, but it's good practice to always close the database when you're done with it. it could potentially give you errors if you don't. So let's make this function db close. And again, let's just say if there's an error, console log the error message. So what we're going to do here is create a table. In order to do that, we type db run. And then we're going to pass it a string. This is going to be the SQL. We're going to say create table. I'm going to call this users. And I'm going to store some user data in it. So here you're going to put the column names you want to store. I'm going to want to store first name, last name, Username, password, what else do I want? Um, I guess an email, that would be helpful, and an ID. That looks good to me. Let's run it. And then to make sure this worked, you can run it again. And perfect. If you get this error, that means everything's working. Because the error it's giving you is the table already exists tables up and running. What we can do is comment this out or delete it if you don't want it anymore. We just don't need that line there. And then we can insert our first couple of variables into the table. So let's make a variable called SQL. And this is going to take in our insert query. So let's write insert into the table we just created, which was called users. And then we're going to pass it all of these parameters.
And this is basically just saying that we have this table users and we want to insert into it a first name, a last name, a username, and so on. But next we have to send the values. Now this is done interesting. In an now this is done in an interesting way. We're actually going to pass it like this. We're going to say values. And then inside of this, we're going to give an equal amount of question marks uh, with a comma in between to this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to do six of these. And this will make sense in a minute. I know it might be kind of confusing. But what we're going to do now is we're going to run our query. And we're going to say db run. We're going to pass it that SQL. And then we're going to pass it an array. And this array is going to essentially contain a variable for each one of these. So the first thing we wanted to pass it was a first name. So let's make it Mike. And then the last name can be codes. And then the username could be uh, Mike underscore codes. The password could be 123. The email could be Mike codes at gmail.com and the ID should be an integer let's just make it one awesome so now what we're gonna want to do is give this another parameter this one's gonna be a function it's gonna take in an error and what we're gonna do here is the same thing we've already done if there's an error let's console log it and if there's not an error, that means it ran. So let's console log. A new row has been created. Perfect. We can run it. And there we go. Supposedly this worked, but let's make sure. Let's comment out the line we just made to run it. And then what we're going to want to do is actually query all of the rows that are currently in this. DB all. And that's going to take in some SQL, an array, an error, rows, and this function, again, if there's an error, console log the error. But if there's not an error, we're going to take the rows, and we're going to do a for each to loop through each of them as a row and here we'll just console log it so you can see what we're working with now before I run this I do have to change this SQL so I'm gonna copy that and comment it out so I'm gonna to want to leave that original for reference now what I'm gonna type for this SQL is just a simple select statement so I'm gonna say select star which star basically just means everything all of the rows from users and if I run this I should get there we go we get the one row now if there were more rows we'd get more rows but our current database just has one row in it so that's how you do it everything's working and it was pretty easy I actually want to use this mock database for another small tutorial but I'm going to need more data. So I'm going to populate it with more data. However, I don't feel like doing this all manually. I want to get random user data from an API. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, you can stick around. If not, have a great day. I hope that this was helpful and you're able to learn something. For those of you who stuck around, the first thing I'm going to do is install Axios. Oop. npm install Axios. I'm going to declare it up here. And then what I want to type is axios.get. And I'm going to enter in a URL here. This is a really cool API where you can get random user data.
Um, there's all kinds of ones too. It's not just limited to users. So if you ever need random data, check out this randomdataapi.com. It's great for stuff like this. And then I'm going to say dot then, which is going to take in a response. And what we're going to do here is let's just console log the response. But also, let's make sure we catch any errors. So let's say catch. And let's say error. And this time, we're just going to console log the error. Perfect. So let's comment out this DB all just so that it doesn't get in our way. And let's r run the index file. Require is not defined because I don't know how to type. Awesome. And here we go, look at this. We have all this data right here. ID, a password, first name, last name, and you'll see this guy's last name is Marks, first name is Magnolia. But if I run it again, something totally different. This is what we're gonna use to populate the database, just to give it a couple more entries. So what I'm gonna do here is inside of this, I'm going to take all the data that I want. Instead of console logging the response, let's look at this. Let's start by destructuring data. Set it equal to response. And if you don't know what destructuring does, it basically just makes it so instead of typing response period data, I can type it just like that. And then we're going to do that with every one of these. So we've got a first name. Set that equal to data. We need a last name. We need a username. An email. Um, an ID. and a password. Awesome. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave that commented out, but I'm going to take this, copy that, what was creating our new row, and I'm going to put it inside of this. Ideally, you'd use async and await, make this way cleaner, but this is just for tutorial purposes, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take the closing of the database, too, because that will give me an error if I don't, because it'll close the database while it's waiting for a response from the API. And now I'm simply going to replace these with all the variables. So first name instead of Mike, last name instead of codes, username instead of that, email instead of that, password instead of that, and an ID instead of that. Awesome. Now I'm going to run it. Error, the table users already exists. That's my fault. I didn't mean to copy that too. I'm just going to fully delete that so it doesn't throw me off again and run it. Perfect. Let's do this a couple times. I don't want to ping this API too much. That should be good. Let's get rid of the code we just put in there. This time I'm going to fully delete it because I know I have no more use for it. 
db close, let's grab that. Comment out our display all code. Get rid of the whole Axios request. And run it. And look at that. We have a whole bunch of entries now. All with random user data, except for, of course, the first one I wrote in. So, yeah, that's how I would populate it with dynamic data. Hopefully you found this helpful if you decide to stick around. Uh, I hope you all have a great day or night. Take it easy.